Hello, welcome to Literary Life and to my book reviews for April 2019. And I actually cannot believe how many books I somehow managed to knock out this month. But I think it's because a couple of them were in. Eh, and so I, I basically didn't finish, which you'll hear about in a minute. Um, so the way this works, if you haven't seen my book reviews before, is I'm going to go through the books from one star to five star books. We're going to start with the one star. One star essentially mean I didn't finish them. It's just not worth the time. There are too many good books out there. Um, two star, didn't really like it. Three star, I liked it. It was a good book. Four star, loved it. Five star is like blew my mind. One of the my top books. Just loved, 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 loved it. Um, okay, so let's get started again with the one star book. Um, so the first one was The Song of Kali by Dan Simmons. And this is one I received in my blind date with the book club um, subscription, which I do need to start up again soon. Um, this is, I think, the first time from that. It's a thriller that I did find it a one star rating for me. So essentially, this is about a, um, I think, is he an author? Um, I can't even remember who the main character is. That's how like much I did not enjoy it. But him and his wife go back to India. I believe his wife's from India. And there is supposedly a god who, um, or an author, a well-known author who's come to life. And there's this female god. And I, I just, it just, it did not grab me at all, obviously. Um, and interestingly enough, I've tried to read Dan Simmons before, Hyperion, which is a sci-fi novel. This is his first published novel. And I didn't really like that one either. So maybe it's just that his writing style isn't for me. Um, but yeah, so essentially, um, there it is. This one will be um, probably given away, taken to work um, here soon. So there it is, one of the one star. And I did have another one star, which is like the completely other end of the spectrum. And for me, this was called, this was Saved by Beauty. Um, it's a memoir by Roger Housden, Adventures of an American Romantic in Iran. Um, yeah, so basically he writes about his experiences while traveling and the culture and it's, I, I it, to me it was just too romanticized. Um, it, the book itself, he's shifting between his observations and history, but I, I just, I couldn't feel there. It was like over intellectualized. It, it was like a meta about a meta about a meta experience and it just lost me. It was just too fluffy for me. And, um, yeah, I, I just, it, it was more about like his own head. I don't know. I just had a hard time connecting to it. So this was another one that I just um, did not really care for. Um, and I didn't even finish reading. So those were the two. Now we're going to go in. I did have a couple two star books. So I guess from a reading perspective compared to the past few months, it's, it's, it wasn't like my best. Um, but this one I was so disappointed in because I thought it sounded so cool and I was so excited about it. An Easy Death by Charlene Harris. Um, I mean, it was like, it's like sci-fi, fantasy, western, all kind of rolled into one, this really kick-ass female main character, and it just didn't grab me. <laughs> like, I kept trying and trying. I just found the character development, like, mediocre. I, I, I love the concept. I just, it just didn't grab me, and I think I literally, like, stopped at the very end. I was just like, I'm, I need to move on. So there was another end book for me, if you saw me get that one. I do think that may have been my last my last sad box. I was so bummed from apostrophe book box. And um, again, I tried to read Charlene Harris before, and I didn't really like, like um, oh, God, that show they made on HBO. <laughs> it's, like, huge. The, the vampires and the werewolves. And I, I actually didn't like the books. I tried to read one of them, and I was like, yeah, so maybe it's, yeah, something again with the writing for me. Um, the next one was a book I had received. I went to a book event, um, and they gave us several free books. And I was so excited again because it's a cozy mystery. And cozy mysteries for me are like the ones where, you know, if you think about if you like were around in the 80s, there was Murder, She Wrote, Moonlighting. I don't know. I'm trying to think about some of What was that? The Columbo. Uh, there, there were just these shows. And they were very, like, mystery, but kind of comfortable at the same time. Like, it, even if you were, it wasn't going to be like, oh, like, oh. You never had to hide your face. And... I keep thinking, like, I want to find that cozy mystery author um, that 
brings me that experience, but it's like a fine line for me. You just cross it and you go to hokey. And that's what happened. And I so tried. I so tried. And I loved the beginning of this book. I did love it. And it was hilarious, the concept. So essentially, it's this little town in Michigan. Um, this woman's living in Chicago, goes through a divorce, moves back to Michigan to stay with her mom. And while there, the, the little library free thing that the mom had put out is like, um, destroyed. Someone has beat it up and totally demolished it. And then a neighbor's found dead. And there's this hilarious neighbor, a couple hilarious characters in the neighborhood. And it just, it, 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 it started out so promising. And I did actually really like her writing of the cozy mysteries. I have tried to read this writer's, um, Elizabeth Kane Buzelli's, um, writing was, um, enjoyable. But I, it just got to the point after a few points, I don't know, it, I just got, it was just too much. Um, but yeah, like I said, Cozy Mysteries, a fine line for me. So if you do know of one that you really think just stays solid as far as doesn't get too hokey, I don't know how else to put it for me, just, they just get hokey, um, I would love to know. I do have a couple still on my to read list that I heard authors talking about when I was at this book event. So we'll have to see if maybe one of them comes around. All right, no three star books. So it was pretty much a month of don't really, didn't really like it, really loved it. So here we go, a ton of four star books. So let's get into them. The first one was a lot, which was a collection of short stories about a young man kind of coming into himself um, in Houston, I think it is, Texas, if I remember correctly. This was a book of the month club selection. Very thin, very fast read. Um, I just really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the author's writing. I enjoyed the voice. I enjoyed the characters. Um, overall, just a really interesting story about relationships and sexuality and love and family and culture. And um, it was just all just well done. So re definitely recommend that. The next book was a book that was given to me by um, actually my manager at work. The Leavers by Lisa Ko, and this was a book of the month club, I think back from like a year or two ago. Um, so essentially, this book is about a mother um, and son relationship. Uh, the mother does disappear at some point in the son's life, and he goes into um, a foster situation and is then adopted, and he is Chinese-American first. No, he's not even first. I can't remember if he was born in America or he immigrated to America, but regardless, um, he is adopted by an American family of, um, like very intellectualized, you know, like professors, so very different upbringing from what, where he had been prior to that. And it's sort of about, again, identity and him, um, reconciling who he really is. Um, it, it just is so well done. And I absolutely, absolutely love the writing, love the relationships. And in the course of the book, um, it's also him exploring not just about himself and who he is and struggling to kind of come into adulthood, um, but also what happened to his mom and who she was as a human, not just his mother, right? And um, their relationship. So it was, it was a really good book. Highly recommend The Leavers. Um, so the next four-star book was The Care and Feeding of Ravenously Hungry Hungry Girls by Anissa Gray. So this book is about mothers and daughters and again family and community and essentially what happens in this book is there is a um, fairly affluent or well-established um, family. They have I think two daughters, I can't, yeah, two the uh, twin daughters. Um, they own um, a business in a small town that has been struggling due to economic times. And um, the parents are arrested um, for basically stealing from the community to keep their business afloat. Oh, maybe I, uh, I, I know, I think that comes up fairly early in the book. Like for a second there, I was like, oh God, did I? But they do get arrested. And um, the aunts, the sisters of the mom, um, step in to kind of help with the two teenage girls who are struggling. And it is such a good, 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 good book about, um, again, just uh, dealing with family and who who we are and um, relationships. And it just, I loved, I did really enjoy this book. So um, highly recommend this one as well. Another four-star book, Everything You Want Me To Be. Um, so this book, I am... Oh, this book. 
I'm totally blanking. Has this happened? I like look at all of them. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, and this one I'm just totally blanking on right now. So, oh yeah, she's stabbed to death. Okay. <laughs> so, I had a moment. It's been a week. It's been a month. And I had a moment. I don't edit. So I'm just going to keep going. We're going to move on and get to this book. So this book was really good. So <laughs> and I forgot it because I'm exhausted. Um, so this, the main character is killed and she's always been like identified, identified as like a good kid. And so the book itself is, um, understanding what happened that led to her murder. Cause she's not just like, she, did, she didn't commit suicide. It wasn't an accidental death. She was brutally murdered and kind of understanding, um, the relationships and there's some suspects and kind of going through the community and it uncovers not just some um, dynamics going on in the community itself, of course, but um, for the girl her, and who everyone thought she was and what was really going on in her life. And again, just really well written, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it yeah, everything you want would be very good thriller too. Mindy Majea, I think is I'm probably not pronouncing that right. But anyway, okay, a few more four stars. So let's keep rolling. So Excellent Intentions um, by Richard Hull, which was that beautiful cover I received by Page One Books um, at the beginning of this month. This one was so much fun. It has got this really dry humor. I loved, loved, loved this book. <laughs> Reading it was cracking me up. So essentially there's a murder and you don't know who, um, in the beginning, somebody on a train who is not well liked is killed and uh, so the whole book is sort of the court proceeding um, uncovering you don't know who did it they're obviously they have someone on trial but that's not uncovered to the very end and it's, it's just really well done um, it's it's a British um, novel a British author set in um, Britain I believe um, it just unfolds so well into who did it and if you're a fan of like Agatha Christie Sherlock Holmes I mean this is definitely definitely one to check out Absolutely loved it. Just well done. Okay. Blue. This one I probably should have given five stars to. I just, it's like, do you want to give five stars to a book just because it was so disturbing? You know, like I struggle with that. And I, I don't know. I'm still sitting here like four or five stars, four or five stars, four or five stars in the miso soup. This is by a Japanese author, Ryu Murakami, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Um, so essentially, this is set in Japan, uh, Tokyo's um, sex, um, it's not trade industry, it's like entertainment um, neighborhood. And there's an American tourist who basically signs up with a local um, Japanese tourist guy to take him through this sex entertainment um, area. And through the course of the evening, the guy starts to suspect that the American tourist is a serial killer. Oh, okay. So how to describe this book? I'm going to tell you right now. Um, the beginning of the book, you're just kind of like, it's unsettling. Then I hit a scene. It's in the middle of the book. You know, usually books kind of hit their pivot, like toward the end, but you get into it in the middle where I had to keep putting it down and walking away. Because I just, I, it was that disturbing. And I read a lot of disturbing stuff. And I don't know that I've ever experienced it where I had to keep pausing. And then the end of the book is different. It's really kind of like dreamlike, surreal, a lot of conversation. And you're kind of in this weird, like, fugue state. But I literally think the author was brilliant in taking you through this because you're paralleling the main character the character's experience and you're kind of like in shock of everything. It's just amazingly well done and done, I think, in a probably very different way than I'm, I'm going to stereotype and assume than like an American author or an author from a different country could perhaps do. Um, maybe that's why I was so intrigued by it because I do read probably predominantly American um, horror writers. So I don't know if it was the fact that that piece played into it for me, but I just found this book. Maybe I should have gone five stars. I don't know. I was just so like, I, I wasn't sure if it was the, the concept 
or the writing. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, four, four stars, maybe five, maybe 4.5. We'll go with this one, but wow, wow. If you read this one and you want to talk about it, yeah, just post below because I think you're going to need to. Um, okay, the next book, A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin. This book was published in the 50s, and um, this was another one I received in my blind date with a book box um, subscription last I um, had previously. And so this book is basically, a, um, I think it's set around in the 50s, and a woman is dating um, a man who, um, I think it's her fiancé, but she becomes pregnant unexpectedly, and he decides that you know, he kind of needs to offer. And then it just kind of goes from there. <laughs> and it's so well done. It is so well done. Um, and it's fun. It's, it's another one that it's definitely a little bit grittier than like Agatha Christie, I feel like, and um, Sherlock Holmes, but it tied in well to uh, Excellent Intentions. So maybe these would be like a good pairing for a weekend with um, some tea. So <laughs> then... I read, oh, this was a book I had run into, um, uh, again, was given to me, actually, at the book event, Bad X County by John Galligan. So this was my one of my first advanced readers editions. I think it comes out in another month or two. Um, get it? It was so good. So I, I was a little, like, at first, because I haven't done a lot of advanced readers copy, um, but essentially this one is... Um, the main character is the sheriff. Her parents are killed. She lives in Wisconsin, and her their murders are uh, I don't want to say unsolved, but um, not fully solved. And she doesn't fully believe like what was attributed to be the cause. And um, so right now, she, the main character, is an interim sheriff in Baddocks County. Um, there's murder. She's investigating it while also exploring what is um what happened with her parents and it's just you know it, again it touches on um community and loss and relationships but it was so dark and gritty and i absolutely absolutely fell in love with the characters in this town and in this book so this is one where i am hopeful that this is the first of a series because i would so follow it and absolutely love this book so um bad x county um by john galligan all right guys we are getting there this is a long video just even with my blank moment we have three books left and these are all my five star so the first one was another book I was given at this book event um, called Ella Fair Burke, The Wife. This is a thriller, um, again, about relationship and romance and identity or who you are. But essentially, this woman meets, um, she's catering in an affluent area. Um, this man that's attending the party, in a sense, woos her. They begin dating. They quickly get married like a year later. She already has a child. Um, but then as after a few years into the marriage, he's accused of sexual harassment um, of an employee at the office. And then um, another woman comes forward and then disappears. So in the course, and I'm not giving you away anything that's not on the back, in the course of investigating that, it's sort of like the book is about who did she marry? who is her husband, and also kind of picking away, uncovering some of her own past and own trauma she, that she's experienced. And I, you know, it's one of those things like with thrillers, I, I just, you get, you once in a while pick one up that you're like, whoa, well done. Loved it. And this was one, The Wife by Ella Fair Burke blew my mind. So the other one was in one of my other book subscriptions you may have seen um, by Capsule Books, and it was Flowers for Algernon um, by Daniel Keyes. So this book really kind of captures, like, what does it mean to be who we are? What is, uh, you know, what does our cue and intellectual ability really mean? And essentially the book follows the main character who has a very low IQ, and he is... Um, allowed to partake in this treatment, um, which had previously been um, done on this mouse, Elgernon, which um, creates a high level of intelligence. And so Elgernon, successful, um, they they um, do the treatment on the main character who goes from being um, very intellectually challenged, very low IQ, um, to smarter than the doctors who have, um, I don't know, created, discovered the treatment, so to speak. Um, but then Elgernon starts to lose, um, the mouse starts to lose the, um, what is gained from a cognitive perspective. So then the main character is kind of facing, well, what does this mean for me? 
it's a beautiful book. It is an absolutely beautiful book. And I, I had not heard of this one. I don't know how. And um, absolutely loved it and blew my mind. So Flowers for Algernon, highly recommend. Last one, five-star book, Normal People, a novel by Sally Rooney. This was a book, again, Book of the Month Club. Um, absolutely love this book. But it, it's a coming-of-age story about love, relationship, growing up, commitment, families, what it means to be us and how we connect with other people. But essentially it starts with these two main characters that um, befriend them, befriend in high, befriend each other in high school, a male and female. And the female comes from a very um, affluent background. Um, the male's mom works as a cleaner in her home and that's how they meet outside of school. And they develop this friendship. But because their social status in high school is so disparate basically, they hide this um, blossoming friendship but which goes into actually more, um, more. And then they, in college, the flip sort of happens, um, where she becomes more socially, um, I guess, higher level than he is. Um, and the book carries on through adulthood and just the way their friendship, um, it just grows and blossoms and strains and distance. And it's, it's just loved loved this book um and very thin so just another really quick read this is definitely one to um snag if you didn't already from book of the month club or other um your local bookstore um and throw in your bag for some summer reading um so that is it that was april <laughs> we're so done and i am into may's reading i'm exhausted that was a lot of books so if you made it all the way through, thank you as always. Um, definitely, if you are not already subscribed and you're into books, please join and subscribe. I'd love to have you. And um, do uh, follow my Instagram page because I will be doing a giveaway soon for a book subscription. I'm so excited. I'll be announcing that um, on Instagram in about a week um, and drawing it on Mother's Day weekend. So definitely watch out for that one. But um, yeah, as always, if you have questions about the books or you have read them and want to share, yeah, do um, below. Thank you. Take care. Happy reading. Bye-bye.